Good, good evening. Uh, it's uh, May 26th, Tuesday. The time is 7.20, and I call to order the regular meeting of May 26, 2015. Uh, could you please call the roll? Marcio. Okay. Marcio. So we have a quorum. Okay. Um, the first item on the agenda is the. We have uh, the others are absent. The first item on the agenda is the CPA annual audit report. Uh, I would like to ask the auditor, Rob, Rob, to please come forward and give us your summary. Hi, folks. Can everybody hear me without the mic? It's better with the mic. Okay. Uh, nice to be here. I'm Robert Rosen. I'm the managing partner of your auditing firm, Gerstle Rosen Goldenberg. And it's our first year we're doing the audit, and it's a pleasure to be here. I want to introduce from my staff, Seth Bernstein, one of my partners, and Michelle Foray, who's uh, one of my senior accountants. Just a little background on the firm so you know who you're dealing with. We've been in business 29 years. We represent uh, associations throughout South Florida, one of the larger firms in South Florida. And um, what we're here tonight to do is explain to the board and to you owners uh, the financial condition of the association, talk about what we did during the audit, and then of course take any questions from the board and from the owners if it's opened up to you guys, and then hopefully have the board approve the audit so it can be available um, to, uh, to be disseminated at, at your request. So that said, what we've done is I put together a, uh, a uh, worksheet, if you will, that says International Village Association audit key points. And I'm gonna go through those. They're kind of like bullet points of some of the key, uh, does everybody have one or share one? Okay, hold on. Yes, David. Can we make a few copies, David? Is there an actual copy of the table? Thanks. While the copies are being made, I'll just give you a little background about what we try to do um, as, as an auditing firm. Well, we want to make sure, and, and what's first and foremost, is that we properly state the financial condition of the association. And, and what that means is that as of year end, we accurately report the assets and liabilities, which is known as the balance sheet. So like if you took a snapshot of the assets and liabilities of the association, that's what we are certifying. And then what we also do is look at the revenues and expenses, uh, what is the association collecting in terms of maintenance fees, what other sources of revenue, what expenses, and so on and so forth. And then we'll go as far as we'll make inquiries of third parties. We'll speak to lawyers. We want to know, um, <clears throat> for example, is there any pending litigation that the association is involved in? And, and do we need to disclose that? And so on and so forth. So that's really what our objective is, you know, as orders. We want to give you, in accordance with, you know, good accounting standards, good auditing standards, so on and so forth, good clean financials as of year end. What we do is we work with your management company, we get work papers from them, schedules from them, and we test those to make sure that they're accurate and so on and so forth. So, you know, that's just a little background of what's what's involved in the process. So, um, in a couple minutes, I'll dig into the numbers, as they say. 
Okay, um, thank you, appreciate that. Um, before I open it up to the audience, is there any discussion on the board about the audit? Okay, uh, last week we had a, a brief meeting where we approved the 20 adjusting journal entries that right. you had, uh, basically to balance the books. <clears throat> and uh, there was another item, of, of a write-off, that was approved back last year by our uh, former attorney based on the fact that uh, there were 400 or so thousand dollars of uncollectible uh, um, assessments, basically ma maintenance fees and so forth, because those units had gone into foreclosure, and that's when the, uh, the Safe Harbor Act provision kicks in, which, is, which they says we're only entitled to, to 1%. So in order to get that off the books, in order to improve our position with the bank, which at some point we'll have to refinance that loan uh, for the Wilma the uh, Wilma loan. We need to basically take that off the books because it's uncollected, un uncollectible anyway, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so um, Hayden, who's not here yet today, uh, had some issues with it. He sat down with the auditors. They've shown him um, and justified, I believe, to him where that money on the, on the general ledger sits and why it was written off. Um, and so we're, we need to, I believe, ratify that right up today, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so I, uh, I make a motion um, before we get to the audit itself to uh, ratify the $432,000 write off based on the recommendation of the uh, former attorney as well as the auditor. Uh, and is there a second on that? Marcio seconds it. And uh, any discussion on that item from the board? Okay, hearing none, anybody in the audience have any questions about that? Yes, Stuart. Well, I think we, before you vote on it, the man on the board that's the expert is Hayden. I think we should contact him and see if he's in agreement. Well, yeah, I, um, I spoke to him earlier, but uh, I guess he had a, a problem getting here today. Um, I tried that. Yeah. Right, I tried three times. I tried. But, um, mm -hmm. yes. So why not? How can you vote on that one? He's the expert. I think we will really well vote to him. Yeah, we we're spoke voting, to him, and the auditor is here. We're voting based on his recommendation. Oh, okay. So, um, any any questions? Any other questions from the uh, from the membership on that on that item? Hearing none, the motion passes. And now I guess we get to the audit itself. Uh, okay. Well, thanks, John. Sure, go ahead. Go. Sure. Okay, folks, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the, uh, the handout. And, um, you know, not only will I read it to you, but I'll explain what the significance is, if you will. So, for example, in point number one, as of December 31st, the association had, you know, operating cash of $938,000, and in addition to that, they had a fund balance of 996000 So what that means from a fund balance standpoint is we had excess assets over liabilities of, of roughly 996000 almost a million dollars. Now, as CPAs, what we do <clears throat> is we like to see that you have a certain percentage of your total budget that's in fund balance, which is also accumulated surplus. It, it's all the income and expenses that have been accumulated since day one that um, uh, has been accounted for, like I said, since I think 1979 when International Village came, came to be, so somewhere around that time. So in effect, you've got an operating budget based on 2014 of roughly three and a half million dollars or 300,000 a month. So from a standpoint, from an operating standpoint, you, um, you know, you, you clearly pass the test of having more than two months worth of operating maintenance fees in your fund balance. The caveat is you don't have reserve funds. Okay, so, you know, for future major repairs and replacements. So, you know, that's something that you waive on an annual basis. We understand that. And obviously, if there's a need for um, funds, you know, the board has the ability to borrow and to special assess, or to borrow and then special assess to pay off the loan, which was done in the case of the, uh, 
the Wilma situation. So I just wanted to, to explain that. Point number two is important. Uh, they all are, but this is important because it addresses accounts receivable and collectability, and I'll explain. The association's allowance for bad debts was $745,000, representing 62% of the accounts receivable. The association has 64 delinquent units over 365 days, of which the association may collect the lesser of 12 months of unpaid or 1% of the mortgage, which is the safe harbors, uh, as John alluded to earlier. So in perspective, uh, on the audited balance sheet, there was about one, almost $1.2 million of maintenance fees plus special assessments owed the association as of 1231. What we did is based on discussions that we had with management and information that we got from the attorney, we determined that roughly 62% of that was uncollectible. And, and we stated that on the, on the financials. And your internal financials reflected an amount similar to that. The reason we do that is we don't want to overstate the accounts receivable. If a unit is in foreclosure, the bank took it over, we're not going to get the full amount. In all likelihood, we're going to get very little, maybe a year or 1% of the mortgage, the lesser of which, once the bank, and the bank drags their heels, as we all know. I'm doing this a long time. And uh, certainly with the obligation of them to have a financial responsibility to the association, they let years go by before they take title to the unit. And what a lot of associations have been doing is they've been taking title, renting out the unit to mitigate some of the losses, some of the financial losses, and therefore making the financial situa situation a little bit more palatable. So in respect to the handout, you know, that, that's the key um, that obviously, you know, collections are, are, are problematic. Point number three, another highlight, as of 1231, the association is owed 31, uh, 347 from Alliance LLC for delinquent assessments um, paid by the unit owners. And I think that's an amount that's been sitting on the books a long time. Michelle, help me out with that one. What, what was the significance of that? Well, they have an agreement with Alliance for the delinquent maintenance fees, and the owners are claiming they have paid those assessments, but Alliance is remitting it back to the association, so they said a right. Okay, and then did okay, and then did we set up an allowance? It was, it's, come, it's in within the, the allowance because, total. based on our investigation, it was determined that it yeah. was going to be difficult for them to collect. And again, right. just just so you all understand, if we set up an allowance that we, you know, or management sets up an allowance at the behest of the board, that doesn't mean that down the road if somehow the money's come in then fine then what happens is we recognize the income at the time that the cash comes in and that's reflected in the financial statements but for conservative reasons we don't want to overstate the uh you know the accounts receivable if they're not collectible in addition you have a bank loan that's out there and they look at the audited financial statements and they, the first thing they would say if they saw $1.2 million, let's say, of accounts receivable is, well, how much is collectible and how much is not collectible, and is that reflected on the financials? And that's what we do that, because we have to report these things to a third party, to your lender. Okay. Um, <clears throat> number four talked about the uh, insurance policies and uh, the balance sheet reflects a prepaid insurance balance of 26000 and an insurance payable of roughly the same amount. Um, what you do is finance the insurance payable, I believe, on a monthly basis. Yes. Now, insurance is a very big line item uh, for, this for an association of this magnitude. It's a relatively high percentage. It, it, it's a relatively high percentage of your budget, but you have managed it. It was $325,000 for the 12 months end of December 31st, 2014. Of that amount, the unexpired or unexpended portion as of December 31st, which is reflected in prepaid insurance, was 26679 
There's some other minor points, but I want to jump down to number seven, because I think that's important, and it's extremely material. And this relates back to the Wilma loan and assessment, and so on and so forth. And that, that takes a big space on, on the balance sheet and on the income statement. And, and you know, there's a lot of moving parts, because again, there's a loan, there's a special assessment, there's an unbilled component of the special assessment, and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna address that now. So we basically said here, and Michelle did the summary, in 2006, the association approved the special assessment of seven million to pay back the Wells Fargo loan. During 2014, the association billed the unit owners 619,000, that was the portion for that 12 month period that was billed out, leaving an unbilled special assessment principal of 1,573,975. So in other words, over the next X number of years, that's the amount that's going to be billed. Now what happened was management put together a schedule based on the number of units that were paying off the, the assessment, times the number of months remaining, so on and so forth, times the applicable amount that the unit was responsible for. And that schedule supported the $1,573,000, almost $1,574,000 um, to, uh, to be billed subsequent to December 31st. You know, and I think it goes on you know, for a number of years. I have a footnote on that. The balance that was being carried on the books was, was much higher. But a lot of that that was carried there represented units that had already been foreclosed and so on and so forth. So those units that are owned by the bank, let's say, and so on and so forth, they will be billed, but they're not reflected in this particular balance. And, and it shows as an unbilled special assessment receivable. Brad from your management company put together the schedule. It was meaningful. It assisted us in the audit and allowed us you know, to publish numbers that we felt were very, very reasonable. Maybe not dollar for dollar, but very reasonable. And it's supported by the unpaid loan balance, the principal balance as of 1231-14, that will be paid over the collection period of that special assessment is a million five hundred and thirty six thousand. That's the balance that's owed to the bank as of um, December 31st, 2014. There's some other items of significance that I wanted to cover. Note 10 reiterates the balance as of December 31st, the loan balance was a million five thirty six three seventy six. Once the audit is approved, and we didn't want to give you a draft of the audited financial statements because we really want you to have access to that once the board finalizes it. Assuming that it's finalized and approved tonight, you'll see these numbers, this loan payable to the bank, this unbuilt special assessment that I'm presenting in this handout. And then it'll come to light in the form of a complete set of financial statements, balance sheet, statement of revenues and expenses, cash flows, footnotes, and so on and so forth. So I just wanted to explain that, you know, as part of the process, hopefully we'll get an approval tonight, and then it'll be available to you upon request. But we didn't want you to sit there without any information, and that's why we put together uh, the handout, so you could, you know, there would be some transparency to the meeting, so on and so forth. Uh, other items of significance, um, in number 11, because this represents a pretty significant liability uh, on the association's books, for the association's documents, each purchaser will remit three months of maintenance fees to the association. The funds are maintained in an interest-bearing account and will be reimbursed when the buyer establishes an on-time payment history for 36 consecutive months. And that escrow balance amounts to about 238,000. Just as an aside, we've seen a lot of associations do this since kind of the economy and the real estate market went south at relatively the same time. Um, you know, back in the day, we really didn't see that many units going into foreclosure and bad debts and all that. But the last 10 years, a lot of things have changed, as we all know. And a lot of associations, we, we represent many, many associations, have established this policy as well. So, you know, to get some money in advance from new unit owners, so at least, you know, they know that they're 90 days ahead in this case, 
and hopefully the, the unit owner will be an on-time payer on a regular basis. So that's something that we, um, you know, that we wanted to point out. Um, on the next page, um, the, okay, in 2012, the board of directors approved a special assessment of a million three twenty-five to fund prior years accumulated deficits. And, you know, as of December 31st, 2013, there was unexpended funds, if you will, of 65827 And what happened was that money was taken into income this year to close out the special assessment. 15 talks about the operating fund balance, which I jumped to in coordination with number one, the, the amount of cash, the 996000 And I said, that's great. That's a good thing. The bad thing is we don't have any reserves for painting, roofing you know, paving and stuff like that. So, you know, just my job to point stuff like that out, even though I know you know that. Number 16 is important. We wanted to show you on a percentage basis, you know, because it's a big association, a lot of moving parts. As of 12-31-2014, the association spent, including the special assessment, loan payments, $4.265 million, mainly comprised of general administrative of 16%, Insurance of 8%, which is pretty low. We see a lot of condominium associations with much higher percentage of that. Utilities, 20%. Various contracts, 12%. Salaries, 21%. And special assessment loan repayment of 17%. What we wanted to do there is give you a flavor as to you know, where the money was going you know, in particular categories. And when you get the final audit, you'll actually see the specific components of all those numbers. And then if there are questions, you can always submit them to the board or management. We are available to answer them if you have questions or concerns about the figures that you look at. We're not just here to show up one time, say hello, give you an explanation, you know, and then see you next year. It's, uh, that's not how we do business. And number 17, like I said, there's a breakdown of what we call the prior period adjustment of 654,000 on page 12 of the notes of the audit financials. And, you know, for those informed readers, when you get it, the reason we're pointing this out is because we, I, I mentioned earlier, we made that significant adjustment to the unbilled special assessment based on the information provided to us by your management company. And, and I just wanted to point that out. Just a few comments. I'm a CPA a long time, since 1982, working in the condominium industry since I moved down here in 85. So. We, we kind of know the arena and so on and so forth. You, you got to manage a company in that, you know, gave us a nice set of books and, and cleaned it up nicely in conjunction with the board. And then we came in and we made a bunch of adjustments. The board approved it. You know, it was a long extended process. But we think we're providing you a good set of books as of December 31st, 2014. I wouldn't sign off on it if I, if I wasn't comfortable with it. And again, there's a lot of stuff going on, there's a lot of units in trouble, and so on and so forth. But I think, you know, you're heading in the right track in terms of transparency, in terms of the quality of the information that's being provided to you, and so on and so forth. You know, and, and I met a couple of the board members and all that, and I, I think that, you know, people work really hard and they've got all your best interests at heart. So again, I gave you a summary tonight, which I tried to be as clear and concise as possible. We're here to answer any questions. And uh, again, it's not just a one shot appearance. We're your auditors. As long as you tell us we're your auditors, as long as the board tells us that we're your auditors. And uh, you know, we've got your back. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. We appreciate all the work that I'm showing into this. <clears throat> and uh, with that, we open up for discussion to the board. Oh, wait, first of all, uh, what should our motion be at this point? Motion should be to accept the December 31st, 2014 audit as presented tonight. Okay. Do I hear a motion to that effect? Or? That's fine. I'll second Marcy's motion. Uh, any discussion on the board? Any discussion? Did somebody say? Any any questions from the? Yes, Michelle. 
I just was curious, would it help with the delinquencies? I know in another condo association, um, before I had been president, we never took titles before, and I started that going. But I just learned in another association where they have someone that literally buys the debt from the association and then goes after the person and actually yeah. evicts them. Would that be something that would be worth us looking into? I've seen that also. There are companies out there that, that buy the receivables in effect. Yeah, they advance cash to, um, you know, to the association. The caveat there is, from what I've been told, is, and I've seen that the fees are very high. That, that these companies charge. And our experience is, and you know, these, these are the people that are out in the field, they could probably chime in, you know, is that they usually end up in litigation with these companies. We've seen it on many occasions. Seth, Michelle, you wanna, because the lady brings up a good point that, you know, it, it would be nice to get that cash advance, but I think there are a lot of, Ramifications. Rob, essentially, that's what they are trying to work themselves out of. With Alliance. With Alliance. That, that Alliance was a company that that, was doing that, that advanced the monies, right? Some. And Some. Yeah. Didn't charge any fees. Yeah. Sounded too good to be true. Right. Yeah, and if it sounds too good to be true. I was looking to advance the money. I was looking to say. I'm so sorry. I have someone who they literally bought her debt, not a company, a person. Like it was up for auction, her debt went up for auction. They literally bought her debt. So say her debt, her debt being her debt go to the association for maintenance, for assessments, whatever, for twenty thousand right. dollars. They came to her and they said, We now own twenty thousand dollars of your debt. We paid your association fees. You have thirty days to leave where you're at, because until the bank repossesses or whatever you do, that's your problem. We took title to your unit until your bank forecloses. If you keep paying your mortgage, good for you, but we own it, you're out. And they literally took it. I think it's a good point. I think what you need to do with that is the board needs to discuss that with the attorney and figure out, because if, in that case, the unit, there's probably a lien on it. It's probably heading for foreclosure mm -hmm. or in foreclosure. I think it's a good idea. I think it's something that the attorney is more expert on it than I am. I was looking for the alliance point. thing where a company comes in. I've always been against that because I knew what the fees were and how that works. Because I think one, I think there's a law that once the unit's in collection, there's certain ramifications that something like that may be precluded. Speak to the attorney. It's a good I idea. I believe the association has first rights to the unit. That's how we took title to start with. Right. But I think if someone's right, but I believe that if someone would want to pay off those. Things, they would take that unit, they could do what they wanted until the bank took over. I, so like, I like the theory behind it. If it's $6,000, why wouldn't I buy it for 6000 quickly, take the title, and then rent it for two years till the bank repossesses, or in some cases we have five years, the association gets their money, I make some income. Yeah, and in some cases, we've taken title. Correct. The association takes title. I know. I, I like that also. Right, we've also yeah. bought the unit, took the unit, and we've sold them. I That's know. right. I did that. Yeah, okay. thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Um, so we have a motion and a second on the floor. Any objection to the motion to approve the audit? Hearing none, it's approved. I think that's it. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Folks, stay well. Hopefully we'll see you again next year. And, uh, you know, work with the board. Do the best you can. I know it's a tough situation. We've seen this in a lot of associations. But it's a pleasure meeting all of you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you.